Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode. Hey everyone, so today we wanted to talk a little bit about how to integrate um, dynamic link libraries, uh, DLLs, into your LabVIEW code. So these can be um, functions that are written in like C, C++, Rust. Um, they could even be LabVIEW built um, DLLs um, that you can call um, and you know pass data in, out, or have them do you know different functions. So we're going to look at how you can do this in LabVIEW. So I kind of have an example here. Um, I'm going to walk through how we can actually build this, um, but this is just a function which, when we run it, returns the name of the computer. So, um, I mean, this is what it looks like on the block diagram. So if we go down to connectivity, go to libraries and executables, there's this call library function node. If we drop this down, can right click or click on it, and we get this GUI. Um, so here we can either connect to a certain DLL we can specify by the path. Um, for certain system DLLs, we can just type in the name here. Um, and you can see this is now enabled, so I can see all of the different functions um, in this DLL. So the one that we want is just this get computer name A. Um, and yeah, so we've got um, this thread option, run in UI thread or run in any thread. Um, and so what you check here is going to be dependent on the function that you're calling. So if you run in the UI thread, it, it makes it so this can only execute um, one, one at a time. Whereas if you're running in any thread, you could have multiple calls to the same DLL. Some are thread safe and some are not. So it's going to depend on what you're doing. Um, if you just have a function you're calling, you know, once in a blue moon, you know, it really doesn't matter. Um, just, you can just leave it as run in UI thread. Um, but yeah. Um, and then there's also different calling conventions. So standard call would be for connecting to like the window AP, Windows API functions. Um, there's also C for doing like a standard C call. Um, so for this example, we're just going to do the Win API. Um, we also have here parameters. So um, we're going to select a return. Um, and we're going to set that to numeric. Um, so just wanted to highlight how we actually figure out what goes on this page. So if you look up like the DLL, and the documentation is going to be different based off of uh, what you're calling. You know, if you're using a Windows um, like kernel 32 or like user 32, you know, that documentation is going to be available on the Microsoft website. Um, but if you're using some other sort of custom DLL, um, you'll have to find wherever that documentation is. But basically here they give us uh, the function and what data goes in and out of that. Um, it also gives you some descriptions of what these things are um, and what values you can get back out. Um, you can also find some getting some examples for certain functions as well. So this would be how you actually figure out what you need to set up. Now it's not as nice as the .NET DLL functions where once you select a method it automatically detects what data needs to go in and out and it also knows what data types those are so it'll like you know automatically set a field to like a string if it knows it needs a string input um, so um, the dotnet stuff is a little easier this is still doable um, you just need to know what data you need in and out so we go back to our block diagram we can do this add here um, so we can specify some of these other parameters so we want to do an LP buffer, and this is going to be a string data type. Um, and you have different string formats as well. So depending on the DLL you're calling, um, this will vary. You know, if you're calling a DLL built in Pascal, you're going to use a Pascal string uh, pointer, C string. These are the most two common two. There's also string handle, string handle pointer. So this is again something you're going to have to figure out from the documentation on your DLL. Um, and there's this minimum size that we're actually going to come back to. Um, so we're going to add this other field that's going to be our LP size. So this is basically 
the size of the buffer to allocate for returning that name. So we're going to set it to numeric and we want to set it to an unsigned 32-bit and this pass we're going to set pointer to value. So now on our LP buffer we can set the minimum size to our LP size. Um, so this is going to basically allocate a buffer of a fixed size and then it's going to write that computer name to that buffer um, and that's pretty much it. There's these callbacks. Right now we're not going to worry about those um, and error checking default, they give you pretty good descriptions here of what these different error checking methods are um, but for this example we're just going to leave it as the default. So we can drop this down and now you can see this looks like this. If we want to make it look like this top function, I can right click on this and do name format and go to names and now it looks just like this one. So I can delete this. Um, so you can see here we're just passing in one string constant for our LP size. So this is the total buffer size we're allocating for LP buffer. Um, 25 characters, you just need to make sure that this is at least big enough for to fit your computer name in it or you're gonna get an error. Um, as long as it is, you can just run this and we get our um, our computer name out so we know that it worked correctly. Um, one other thing I wanted to show is there's also this create C file you can use. Um, so this is just a tool to basically generate a C file that's doing whatever your library node is doing. So we're going to open this up just so you can see. Um, yeah, so call library source file. We're just including external code.h. This is a header. Um, and then you can see our function here get computer name a. And we're using those inputs that we configured. So um, just creates this C example of basically what you're doing with your um, LabVIEW code. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then we can run this. Um, we get error terminals here as well, and we can see that it works. And so, as you can see, it's a little harder than configuring the .NET DLLs, but it's still doable. Um, there's just one other thing I wanted to highlight. If we go to Tools, go to Import, and go to Shared Library, there is a cool wizard for mapping all of the functions in a library. Um, this do does require a header file to be present. So here we need the DLL file and a header file so if I go here let's go here there's my DLL um, and it automatically detected that I have a header file in the same location um, so basically this is just a, an instrument driver that's built into a DLL for a North Atlantic PAV basically a phase angle voltmeter I can just select the DLL and the header file click next um, I can include certain pass and preprocessor definitions. In this case, we don't need to do any of that. Um, and then this is going to go parse our header file. And you can see now it's returned a list of all of the functions in that DLL, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can also see as you click on these what different inputs and outputs are available. So we've just mapped every single function in that DLL. I can go ahead and I can uncheck certain functions that I don't want to build. Um, or if I just want to build everything, I can just I'll leave it all. Select next, and it's going to package everything into a LabVIEW library for me. I can assign a name to that, and I can specify where it's going to install that. So let's hit next. Um, then I can select an error handling mode. So let's just do simple error handling. Um, you can read through each of these. Um, but yeah, each one kind of has its own use case. I'm going to hit next. Now I can go in and I can see each individual function, the data going in and out. I can go in and I can specify additional instructions for each one. So if I want certain VIs to be reentrant, if I want them to, if certain functions are thread safe and some aren't, I can, you know, specify threads. Um, standard call versus C and I can apply that to all or individual stuff and I can also go ahead and I can add documentation and specify what I want the VI name to be for each one. By default it's just going to be the function name. Uh, in our example we're just going to leave everything as is and you can see this is what it's going to create 407 VIs for, 417 VIs for me. So it's really awesome, saved me a ton of time not having to 
build those from scratch. And this is going to take a minute just because there's a lot of VIs, but this is basically going to create a library that wraps all of the functions in that entire DLL. So I can just call them simply in LabVIEW um, and basically configures those uh, uh, call library function nodes for me. So I don't need to go and link to the DLL and select the function I want and then look at the documentation to figure out what inputs and outputs I want and what their data types are and you know whatnot. I, this is all done for me. Um, so it's a really, really cool tool. Um, as I said, the one caveat is it does require a header file. So you can't just upload a DLL without a header file. Um, if you don't have a header file, you're going to have to do it the kind of manual way where you go drop a you know call from library node and you know kind of link everything that way. But if you can get a header file for your um, for your DLLs um, super quick, you know, we're generating 417 different VIs in a matter of about a minute. So we're, you know, pretty good. Um, and as a side note, if you create a DLL in LabVIEW, so if you, you know, have a LabVIEW project and you have some code and you say you want to create a dynamic link library, um, that will actually generate a header file as well with your dynamic link library. So if you're creating a DLL in LabVIEW and some other user wants to import your DLL, um, they can just use this wizard. Um, just pass in the DLL and the header file and it will go and map the entire library. So that's another way that you can share code, um, but it doesn't have to be LabVIEW code called by LabVIEW code either. So I can create a DLL and someone can access that in virtually any programming language. So it could be C++, um, it could be Rust, it could be Python, um, whatever you know, whatever uh, you want to integrate it to. Um, yeah, so this is just finishing up now, um, the last functions, and I can show you what these look like. Um, it might take just a sec to finish everything up. Um, But yeah, um, just want to highlight as well. So if I were to go and basically create, uh, try to create a LabVIEW wrapper for that dynamic link library from scratch, um, that probably would have taken me at least a full day's work to do, just to go through the documentation for each individual function and configure the inputs and outputs of each function. Um, if I was working pretty quickly, um, that would take me probably at least a full day um, and this is all done in, yeah, about a minute. So you can see we have our library with these functions. If I open up one of the functions, you can see that it mapped the different inputs and outputs that it has, and you can see this here. So um, it just creates a little bit of documentation and wraps all of these functions. So I don't have to go figure out how to wrap each function. It kind of just does it for me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the ins and outs of um, DLLs in LabVIEW. Um, thank you guys for tuning in.